fellow Cameroonians, both home and abroad. I want to say it has been a remarkable moment since we call an end to this war for Cameroonians below the age of 40 who believe that we can achieve peace, unity, freedom, and prosperity in Cameroon without violence. For those above the age of 40 who share our vision, we welcome you. If you are above the age of 40 and you believe the only strategy to this problem is through war and through violence, we say this mission is not for you. Our objective is to move our GDP from approximately 45 billion US dollar to 1 trillion US dollars in the next 20 years. We are going to ensure that there is increase of jobs, healthcare, safety, and innovation as we partner with the government to empower the private sector. Our strategy is simple, to train Cameroonians in the industries that are transforming the global economy. There are seven main industries that are transforming the global economy. The financial service sector, the technology sector, real estate and construction, agriculture and beverage, healthcare, renewable energy, entertainment, and the media industry. Our goal is simple. We intend to train 3,000 Cameroonians in these industries that will go on to create employment that will transform our economy. Our conversation tonight surrounds what I call informed patriotism. What does it mean to be a Cameroonian? What does Cameroon want? And what does Cameroon represent to the world, to the average Cameroonian? This is a conversation that has not been had in this country for the past 63 years. You might be asking the question, what is patriotism? Patriotism is the law for one's country and the appreciation of its institutions. Cameroon is freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of enterprise. A strong Cameroon is a strong economy. And as we embark on enhancing the private sector, we will partner with the government to cut down taxes, reduce inflation, and increase employment. The personal income tax in Cameroon is between 10 and 35 percent. The inflation rate in Cameroon decreased to 6.20 percent in November from 6.80 percent in October of 2023. The unemployment rate in Cameroon was 4 percent in 2022 a 0.12% decline from 2021. In order to build a Cameroon that provides equal opportunity for all Cameroonians, there are certain core values that we must inhabit. When you hear of Cameroon, what comes to your mind? The Cameroon we envision is the Cameroon where liberty prevails. The kind of Cameroon we envision is the Cameroon where equality reigns. The kind of Cameroon we envision is the Cameroon where individualism is celebrated. The kind of Cameroon that we envision is the Cameroon that practices democracy. The kind of Cameroon that we envision in the next 20 years is the Cameroon that celebrates diversity. The kind of Cameroon that we envision is the Cameroon where capitalism is encouraged. There are character values that we must embody as Cameroonians if we will build this nation and move it from a GDP of $45 billion to 
to a GDP of $1 trillion in the next 20 years. Cameroonians must embody the spirit of resilience to work extremely hard and pursue a cause that you believe in without giving up. Cameroonians must embody ingenuity. We must value innovation, creativity, and problem-solving skills. Cameroonians must embody optimism, a positive outlook, and belief in the possibilities of a better future for all Cameroonians. Cameroonians must celebrate independence. Cameroonians must value individual freedom, autonomy, and self-reliance. Cameroonians must believe in the spirit of entrepreneurship. The Cameroon dream should involve the pursuit of entrepreneurship and the opportunity to build businesses, create wealth, and achieve success through hard work and innovation. Cameroonians must be courageous, be brave, and believe that you were called to make a difference in the world. Unity. Cameroonians must unite and believe in each other. Generosity. Cameroonians should be generous and philanthropic in their gestures. Our organization is CSDP, the Cameroon Sustainable Development Project. We believe that if we set up proper structures, we can be able to transform our entire economy. For the past seven years, we have been fighting a war. And I reiterate, this war was financed with zero government support. If we can put our money together and buy guns, we can put our money together and develop our nation. And CSDP is embarking on that project. But this time, it will be different. You are not just going to donate to this cause. You are investing in this cause. That is, whatever amount of money that you invest in this project, you are going to get back your money and a return on your investment. Because these industries will be extremely productive will create jobs, create products and services that will serve every Cameroonian. And therefore, you should get a return for your investment. When you invest in guns, you only buy bullets and weapons that go out there to destroy, but never create. But with what we are embarking on, you will be able to see the fruits of your labor. We will be starting with agriculture. And I want you to imagine that we set up an agricultural team that is made up of a project manager, an agricultural expert, a supply chain manager, a financial manager, a marketing and sales manager, a research and development specialist, human resource manager, environmental and sustainability officer, a legal advisor, a technology and IT specialist. These are the 10 departments that we will erect just within the agricultural sector. And this goes on for the second department, technology. We will have a chief technology officer, a chief executive officer, a chief information officer, a chief product officer, a chief data officer, a chief security officer, a chief marketing officer, a chief financial officer, a chief operations officer, a chief human resource officer. These are the 10 departments within this sector. And if we have these individuals trained, we will be able to have a top-notch technology sector 
within Cameroon that will serve Cameroonians both home and abroad. And this goes for real estate and construction. We will need to construct farm to market roads. Remember, the project we are starting with is agriculture and technology and the service sector. With real estate and construction, we will have a chief executive officer, a chief operating officer, a chief financial officer, a chief development officer, chief construction officer, chief legal officer, chief marketing officer, a chief sustainability officer, and a chief technology officer. This is what ensures that a project actually works. When these 10 departments within one sector is functioning and have competent individuals that have been trained by experts around the world, with this, we are guaranteed to succeed. This goes on for the financial service sector that we will erect within the private sector in Cameroon. This also goes for the healthcare sector because we need to think of systems that will create hospitals and healthcare sector that will serve the local community and serve the nation. This goes for renewable energy as well. We will have project manager, renewable energy engineer, we will have environmental scientists, we will have financial and investment manager, we will have policy and regulatory analyst, we will have supply chain and, and procedure specialist, we will have a grid integration expert, we will have a community regulation manager, we will have a health and safety manager, we will have data analyst and performance monitor. The reason why we are proposing all these structures is because we need to be thinking about uh, corporate social responsibility in everything that we do. We have to take care of the environment because if we destroy our own environment, we will struggle in the future. And this is why most projects fail because people don't put together the right team. Have those individuals trained. That is why those of you who are part of the Nation Builders University. You're going through this first phase to get your mindset ready for this project. Like I said, the objective is to get 3,000 Cameroonians. We just want 10% of this country that is approximately 30 million people. We want 3,000. That is out of 10%, which is 3 million, we are going to end up with 3,000. These individuals will be formidable experts that have been trained by us and by the best around the world that are competent to handle each sector that we will erect in that nation. That is, if we are handling a project, we are guaranteed that that project will succeed because we are not guessing. We know exactly what works and we will do just that. Media and entertainment industry. We're going to ensure that there is a producer, there's a director, screenwriter, casting director, marketing and publicity manager, distribution executive, finance and accounting manager, legal counsel, post-production supervisor, music supervisor, and composer. The reason why I'm saying those things is because Hollywood in the United States of America, if they embark on a project, you know for a fact that that project will be successful. This is the structure that we want to build in Cameroon. That if we pick an artist that is talented and we want to invest in the career of that artist, we are not guessing that artists will succeed if CSDP chose you to be the artist that we want to develop. You are guaranteed to be successful in any project that we embark on, we will be successful. And this is how the private sector can partner with the government within a nation and be able to create opportunities for every citizen within that nation. America did not happen by chance. America is what it is today because the people were intentional in bringing about that transformation. And that is exactly what we will do 
in Cameroon. Now, we've been fighting a war for the past seven years. And I want to let us understand that there's various factors or several factors that will ensure that you win a war. The reason why we call an end to this war is because there is no chance of the Amazonian War of Liberation to be successful. And there are several reasons. And I just want to say to those who are above the age of 40 that want to keep fighting, many individuals around the world, many nations around the world have embarked in wars that have been successful and there are many nations around the world that have embarked on wars that failed. And what we should understand that there are several factors that you can look at and tell if this individual is going to win in a war. An example of a war that was successful, which numerous people have outlined, is the American Revolutionary War that started in 1775 to 1783. Why did America win that war? Number one, America had allies. From 1775, at the very start of that war, France supported America. For the past seven years, we have not had the support of any nation. Spain supported America. The Netherlands supported America. And many other nations that rallied behind America and say, we stand with you. When I talk about support, military support, financial support, strategic support, we have zero. Also, when you look at the American Revolutionary War, you will realize that in 1775, George Washington emerged as the captain. That is, we had a leader that we could look up to. And that is why America succeeded. When you look at the Amazonian War, the leaders are disunited. And with this, you will never ever succeed. And this is some of the reasons why we look at this situation, we look at this war, and we say there's no chance for you guys winning. Clear objective. When you look at the Ambazonia war, what is the objective of the war? You have numerous leaders articulating different versions of history and different objectives or outcome that they intend to have out of this war. These three factors are very important that you underscore when you are referencing the American Revolution. They had support from other nations. The leadership was united and they had a clear objective or outcome that they wanted to achieve out of that war. They also reference Eritrea. And I want to say the Soviet Union supported Eritrea. Cuba supported Eritrea. Libya supported Eritrea. China supported Eritrea. And the Eastern Bloc countries supported Eritrea. Even though it took them 30 years. But they had support from other nations. Now, the imposition of the liberation tax is as a result of little support from other nations. I want to say what we have to prioritize is the sanctity of human life. You cannot make another human being. That is the sovereignty that only God has. Let's value human life. The fact that wars have been fought throughout history doesn't necessarily mean that we have to fight a war to achieve our goals. 
when people are limited in their creativity and in their thinking, they resort to war. When people are not creative, when people can't resolve their differences, they resort in a war. But there are better ways of resolving our differences in this 21st century, given the availability of information that we have at our disposal. I would like to share with you four wars where unity among leaders played a significant role. The American Revolutionary War, World War II, the Gulf War, the Kosovo War. I would also like to share with you a list of failed wars throughout history. The Second Punic War, the Battle of Sahel, the Spanish Amanda War, the Thirty Years' War, the War of 1812, the Crimean War, the Franco-Prussian War, the Russian-Japanese War, the Invasion of Iraq War, and the War in Afghanistan. All of these wars failed because of the lack of a clear vision. These wars failed because of the lack of support coming from other nations. This war failed because the leadership was disunited. These three key factors are very important to underscore. And when you look at yourselves, you should ask the question, are these factors prevalent within the struggle? Obviously it is. And this is how you evaluate a business, you evaluate a war, and you're able to cut your losses early and be able to carve a different path. Another historical event that has been cited throughout the struggle is the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. And I want to remind you that there was a leader called Moses. And every Israelite rallied behind this leader. There was a unity of command. And because of that, the children of Israel made it safe out of Egypt. And none died. None died. Leadership is everything. In any project that you intend to embark on, leadership is paramount. Failed leadership is failed projects, is failed businesses, failed war. And that is something we should accept, step back, work on ourselves, enhance our leadership qualities, learn how to resolve conflicts, learn how to mobilize other leaders so that we speak and act as one. One thing you realize is that our people have been told everywhere they have gone is that you guys need to be united. We hear fractions of stories from different groups and we don't know who to believe. And they say, oh, the government doesn't want to have dialogue. If the government wants to have dialogue, who is the government going to speak to? And what would the government be discussing with you about? The leaders out here have different outcomes out of this war, which makes it difficult for anyone to even have a conversation with them. And this is something that they must accept. Again, the reason why we're embarking on this project, like I said, I believe every Cameroonian can do what I'm doing right here. And as we embark on this project, I want to remind you that I will be stable, I will be consistent, I will communicate. I will not be perfect. I will progress as we move along together. There are a lot of Cameroonians out there that are extremely smart in the different areas that we intend to embark on. Your expertise will be needed. Your advice will be needed. 
your participation will be needed. If we want to see a Cameroon that thrives, we must cooperatively work as one. Craft an identity that everyone around the world looks at us and say, this is from Cameroon. This is a Cameroonian. When you look at a product that is made in America, you can quickly distinguish that product from any other product. When you listen to an artist that is made in America, you can quickly distinguish that artist from any other artist in the world. And I just want to let our people understand, it is time for us to craft a unique identity. A unique identity that brings out our creativity. That sets us apart. We cannot be a clone of another African country. That continent is approximately 1.4 billion people. Europe is approximately 750 million people. Yet, they have their unique identity. Germany has their unique identity. Britain has their unique identity. France has their unique identity. Yet, the European continent is not as large or vast as the African continent. We cannot be a clone of another African country. We have to be unique and distinct from every other African country. And that will start when we craft for ourselves the Cameroonian identity. What makes us authentically Cameroonian? And that is why we have confusion in our country. That is why we cannot unite and work as one. That is why we insult and badge one another online. That is why we don't celebrate an individual within our community. If you want to rise up as an individual, we want to bring you down instead of rallying behind you, supporting you, cooperating with you, we want to divide and bring you down. That is the reason why we cannot work as one on a project for a considerable period of time. You partner with an individual after five months or five years, they want to break out and go start their own stuff. We can never build a nation with this kind of spirit. We can never be successful with the spirit. We need to craft an identity, have character, that anyone around the world that partners with us understands that this Cameroonian will deliver on their promise. This Cameroonian can be trusted. This Cameroonian will do what they say. That is the Cameroon that we are designing from here moving forward. It's going to be different. It's going to be filled with love. It's going to be filled with a lot of passion, strategy, vision, belief, courage. All of these attributes, resilience. This is what Cameroon exemplifies around the world. This is exactly what we will do from here moving forward. Regardless of where you've been, whether you've been an amber or a victim of amber, we welcome you here and we say, this is time for change. This is time for reconciliation. And from here moving forward, you are committed to becoming a different and transformed human being for a better Cameroon, for a better nation. For a nation that you can be proud to say, I am a Cameroonian. This is what we envision for our nation in the next 20 years. That nation will be the envy of the world. It will be one of the first nations to have a GDP of approximately 1 trillion US dollars. We can achieve that. There is a blueprint for this.
And if we implement that blueprint, we will get results. I believe in us. I believe in the possibilities of our nation. To those in the diaspora, you've donated a lot of money towards this war, or you've invested huge sums of money to erect a building back home that you barely live in it. This project is an opportunity for you to make a difference in your nation. An opportunity to build the kind of Cameroon that you want to see. When Jeff Bezos started his company Amazon, he put together amazing friends who contributed $20,000 each. Today, they are reaping the reward of that investment. And I want to let you guys know if Bill Gates can do it, we can collectively do it for our nation. If Mark Zuckerberg can build a platform like Facebook, we can collectively make a difference in our nation. This is the time for us to take action. This is the time for us to invest in something bigger than ourselves. It is your time to make a difference in your nation and build the kind of Cameroon you want to see. Imagine when we create a bank or a credit union under this organization and we collectively deposit our money into this bank with the objective to fund these projects. And then we bump up the interest rates, say, 1% or 2% above the national average. Now, if you want to lend money from this bank, and you've gone through our training, and we believe that whatever project that you embark on, you are guaranteed to succeed, we can lend you this money and we reduce the interest rate, say, 1% or 2% below the national average. Imagine what this will do to our economy. Imagine what this will mean for the average Cameroonian. We will be able to transform our economy in the next 20 years. And we will look back and say, we single-handedly did this. We built this nation. You'll be proud of it. We cooperate with the government. We initiate this change. We are not here to fight the government. We are not here to compete with the government. We are here to cooperate with the government so that we can build a Cameroon that everyone feels like this is my nation. I'm glad to be a Cameroonian. I hope this mission inspires you. I hope this mission motivates you. God bless you and God bless Cameroon. All right, if you like this video, you're gonna like this other episode and you can watch it by clicking right here.